Somebody's going to be real happy to get Desmond Ritter from Cincinnati just in their locker room whenever they so. get him. He just seems ready not only to lead a team if it comes to it, and that's the hope, that's that's his uh, trajectory, we think, but just he's going to be a good member of that quarterback room, of that franchise. Chris Sims knows what we're talking about. Chris, let me ask you this, man. You know, would you – let's just start – I want to start with Detroit at two. And it's hard – to talk about Detroit, we really don't know for certain what Jacksonville is going to do at one. But I've heard that if Jacksonville does end up taking Aiden Hutchinson out of Michigan first overall, not to be shocked if Detroit takes Malik Willis. If Detroit takes Malik Willis, or for that matter, if Carolina takes Kenny Pickett or Malik Willis, will you rip these organizations tomorrow for reaching for a quarterback, or would you get it? <clears throat> No, I'm never going to rip rip a franchise for taking a guy that they believe in at the quarterback position that they think can be the guy. Now, you yeah. know, part of the draft is kind of evaluating, right, the rest of the draft and the value and where to get it and do all of that. You know, so I wouldn't be mad, but I would be confused with either one of those teams taking a quarterback. You know, one, I can't imagine Carolina Panthers, they, you know, uh, a rule, their coach, right? Matt Rule. He, he's on the hot seat. You know, as much as Kenny Pickett is the most ready and all that, do you really want to go, wait, this might be my last year as an NFL head coach, and I want to roll the dice and go in there with a rookie quarterback, and he'll save my job? To me, that just doesn't make sense. So I don't see that happening. I wouldn't do that if I was running the Carolina Panthers. And with Detroit, at pick two, with this crop of quarterbacks, no, I don't think any of these quarterbacks are really worth a top five pick. I'm one that just looks at Matt Corral as being the only guy that I would take in the top 15, really. I know I'm in the minority of that, but I look at Detroit in a, in a similar fashion. Like, Detroit's got, they got too many real tangible needs on their football team. They got to build something first. I wouldn't go, let's reach for the quarterback at two, especially a quarterback in Malik Willis, where I love his high-end talent, but it's raw. It is very raw. You know, it's, 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 it's the pocket play, the reading of coverages and going through all that. It is going to take some time, and that's probably why I would say not to do it at two. Uh, Brother Sims, I'm going to ask you this question. I'm going to ask it this way. Regardless of position, regardless of team, yeah. what are you most excited about tonight? What are you most excited about from this draft? with this draft tonight mm. well I mean the way it seems it's going to shake out I will say I mean just to bring up you know Michael Smith what he just said Detroit I mean Detroit and it, it just seems if Jacksonville takes Trayvon Walker at one I just go man the guy from Michigan who looks like he would eat kneecaps right with the head coach Dan Campbell that is cool that's a cool story so I'm excited for that I think the quarterback conversation and where they go is exciting too I have I know some teams that like the quarterbacks, but I have no tangible evidence or information for me to anybody to say, oh, I think that team's going to take them. You know, I've had conversations with teams about some of these quarterbacks, but I think it's still very much up in the air. Here's another Jamison Williams. He's clearly the best receiver in the draft. He's the number one receiver on everybody's board. Uh, will, will someone just take him in the top 10 and go, okay, so what? He's not as good the first four weeks as he recovers from this ACL. It's about the long play. And then lastly, I know I'm giving you a lot here, but to okay, me, no, the, good. Wild good. Cards, the, the wild cards of the draft, all right, cool. The wild cards of the draft are the quarterbacks like we talked about. And to me, Thibodeau and Derek Stingley Jr. That to me, they're the, they're the ultimate boom or bust. I wouldn't touch them in the top 10 or 15 of the draft, but I know there's some teams there that like him, like them, and to me, those are the two guys that can kind of throw the top 10, top 15 out of order you, if one of them go there. Wait, wait. You said you wouldn't. You wouldn't touch Stingley or Thibodeau in the top 15? No. You wouldn't do it? What? No. What? No way. Stingley? What? Well, his best football was three years ago, but we're just going to go on that. And he's been hurt for two years and hasn't played that good. But we're going to go on his Rivals.com high school ranking in his freshman year performance. Like, that to me seems the weirdest one. When I hear, like, people go, oh, Houston Texans with Stingley, and maybe I'm wrong, and I'll make fun of myself tomorrow or next week if I come on. 
but I just go, wait, conservative Nick Casario, New England Patriots from Bill Belichick is going to take the guy at number three who's gotten worse the last two years at his position and has injury concerns, and it's a team that has a full of needs? I just don't buy that. I mean, that's one that's just crazy to me. And Thibodeau, for me, guys, it was really probably outside of my top five as edge rushers. And I know I'm not alone, alone in that. That's why we hear these rumors of him falling. There's only a few teams that really look at Thibodeau as being oh, a top man. 10 talent. That's, the rest of football has him Whoa. down the list. I'm sorry. This it just hurtful. takes one, though. It just takes one. But yes, most of the teams in football do not have Thibodeau as one of their three best pass rushers. I promise you that. I got to tell you, uh, brother, you know, this, this is the number uh, this, one interview. This is affecting me. This is affecting <laughs> Hey, Chris, this is family you watch business. film, we know who interviews yeah, well. Yeah, that's right. We, have you watched the film of his interviews? <laughs> he was great that's on what, Brother yeah, Over Another great. Super Bowl. That's what we like. <laughs> I we know. know. Listen, I don't play. like saying any of this stuff. I root for all these guys. These are young men who will no, work no, hard. Oh, and I, I, I hope, yeah, yeah. I hope they, they prove me wrong and crap all over me. I really do. I'm not rooting against yeah. them. It's just my job to evaluate. Well, no, and we, and we appreciate you saying that, but reasonable people know it's not personal. We, we get that. We're just kidding because we fell in love with him at the Super Bowl. But I, but I love this, actually, this line of conversation. So you said that, you know, a lot of teams do not have Kayvon Thibodeau that high out of Oregon. Okay. Who is everybody salivating over, whether it's your information, whether it's media hype, whether it's mock drafts, and you're like, yo, I just don't see it. Like, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know what they're looking at. Like, why is this guy projected to go here? Why is everybody so, you know, hot and bothered for this person? It's like, I watch him and I'm like, yeah, who is that guy? Would I, no, it is not personal, oh. but it's just your evaluation. Yeah, no, I, the, there, there's, you know, I think I hit on the two, I think that make the most sense to me there right off the bat. You know, I think the one that, let's just say I'm up in the air about a little bit is like Trey Burks, right? I like him, he's in my okay. top five receivers, but he's big. I worry about his weight a little bit. I saw the guy in person. It's, you know, he's a naturally big guy, right? So I worry about him being too big. He doesn't necessarily always separate running routes, but when you get the ball in his hands, it's, it's a different guy. It's like he's got a different gear and he can make things happen. So he's one sometimes where I see people say, oh, he might go at 12 or 13. I, I just go, I don't, I don't buy that. You know, end of the first round, in the 20s, sure. But I sometimes think that gets a little overhyped, and he's a hard one for me. So I think that would be one that jumps out to me more than anything. But I gave you my two big ones for sure with Thibodeau those are the and big Derek ones? Okay. Stingley. Not only do I hear those, that's what I think too. Again, even with Stingley, you know, 4-4-5 four, four, at your pro day. That ain't that special. 4-4-5 four, four, at a pro day, that's 4-5-5 five, five at the combine with a laser finish. So that's what I would worry about too. To me, there's too much hype about the high school ranking around both of those guys. And I think those are the ones I'm a little bit, uh, you know, confused about. I, I'll tell you vice versa, the Georgia D tackles, to me, both yeah. Georgia D tackles you got Jordan are... Davis. That, that you got Davis and yeah. Wyatt going eight and nine yeah, to you got Wyatt, Atlanta uh, and I, Seattle. I haven't seen Wyatt that yeah. high in any mock draft. Tell or me, or tell, Davis, for that matter. I haven't yeah. seen you. Know, you got the, you got Davis the highest of anybody I've seen. Tell me, tell me why you uh, you're, you're so excited about the uh, Georgia D tackles. Well, they're they're I, I just to me they're like can't miss prospects. They're they're as safe as can be. I mean, I love the three you know pass rushers Hutchinson, Walker, and then Jermaine Johnson. And then if you got into the next D lineman I really love, it's the Georgia D tackles. I mean, hey, you guys like uh, Vita Vea down there in, in Tampa Bay, right? He's one of the best defensive tackles in football. Well, Jordan Davis yep. is Vita Vea, except he's more athletic. And Vita Vea was drafted at 12, so I don't really understand that one. I just go, man, he can take on double teams. He can shoot gaps. He pushes the pocket in the pass game. He runs down running backs on toss sweeps outside. You know, that to me is where I look at him as a special player. I'll be shocked if they get out of the teens. I know I may be high on, on those, those two guys. And then Wyatt, who has, I know, a little bit of an off-field history. Wyatt, you know, mo I think a lot of people in football think he really should go in front of Jordan Davis. And I know I've had conversations with people with Devontae Wyatt where I go, 
I think he's better than Quinnen Williams coming out in the draft a few years ago from the Jets, the number three pick from Ooh. Alabama. And I know I've had people in football agree with me and go, I'm with you, dude. He's every bit as good, if not better. So those are guys that I look at that probably won't go as high as I got them in the mock draft, but I think they go somewhere in the mid-teens. They're just too damn good to pass up. Well, let's stay at Georgia real quick because um, your, so your Stingley and Thibodeau is Michael Holly's Trayvon Walker. <laughs> <laughs> right, like you know, you have him going for, for, uh, at, at number yeah. one. You at one, at number I mean. one. You you have him going to provided Jacksonville goes Hutchinson. Does the right. lack of sack production bother you, or did he, as you would put it, f up enough plays in terms of pressures and whatnot to warrant being taken in the top two picks, Trayvon Walker? Yeah, yeah, cool. I mean, listen, this is a great conversation. It really is. And I'm glad Michael Holley's bringing it up and, and you guys are talking about this a little bit because, one, he's a specimen. I mean, he really is. He's a physical freak. I expect him to go to one to Jacksonville. I would take Aiden Hutchinson, just so you know. I'm Jacksonville. I need the sure thing. I know what Hutchinson is, and we're going to go with that. I would. But if you want to hit the home run, Walker's the guy. Walker's measurables are like Miles Garrett. It's, it's special, special pass rusher. Now, to the production thing and all of that, right? That gets overblown in my opinion. Like we talked about this last year with Odafi Way, right? The first round pick from the Baltimore Ravens. He was all over the quarterback all year, but he never got a sack. He was always pressuring him and all right. over him. But in college football, sometimes it's screen here, screen here, roll, read option. Oh, read option. It's like, well, there's no drop back pass game to ever really get pressure on the quarterback. So don't go too high on the stats. And then the other thing I would say to Michael Holly and just to believe in Trayvon Walker a little bit more is Georgia didn't let him play that the best way for Trayvon Walker. They played a defense where they asked him to play almost head up on the offensive tackle and read things. He wasn't allowed to just pin his ears back and attack. And that's where I think Jacksonville goes, wait, if we tell this guy to line up a little wider and put his hand in the ground and just go, go six yards behind the center and go crush that guy right there, they're going, he's going to be real good at that. He just didn't get the chance to do that in Georgia. And I see that, and I am a believer in That's definitely him being one of the top two picks. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let me ask you this, okay? And th this will help me believe a little bit more. All right, so Jacksonville, I understand the logic. I understand the logic, fellas, all right? Let's say Jacksonville is not picking first. Let's say you had a rotation of 10 teams. I want a sample size of 10. Would seven of those 10 teams think the way Jacksonville is? And would seven of those 10 say, yep, we take them too. We had number one. We sure would. We'd go for that home run. Would they do it? No, no. I don't think it would be seven. I think this is one that this is why it's a good question and a good debate. Uh, I, I think you would be almost split down the middle. If not, maybe even more edge towards Aiden Hutchinson, really, to where you might go, no, <laughs> it's six, see, six to four, see, Aiden Chris, Hutchinson. This, I know. Listen, I, I, I know. This is, but those, this is those a team. four teams. This is a team. Yeah. I've adopted them. I've adopted. This is the team I want. I want them to succeed. You, you love them in free agency. I want them Me to do too. well. And I want them yeah. to be smart. Don't do stupid maybe stuff. There's like a this. Maybe there's a correlation between how they draft and the fact that these outspend everybody every offseason. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, no, Chris, it, it'll be interesting uh, to see how that shakes out there, no doubt. So, you know what's going to happen tonight is people are going to give draft grades, right? Uh, after one round, yeah. even though there's seven. And they can't, you can't grade the draft. You can't grade the draft for another three to five years, let alone after one round when you don't have the whole picture. But I'm going to go out on a limb and say the following teams have already aced the first round. I think you'll agree. Cleveland, Denver, Las Vegas, Miami, and the Rams. They all get A's for round one of the 2022 draft, okay? Another team, and I'm, I'm asking you this because of your obvious connections that we all know, could shake up the draft tonight with another veteran trade. What do you know about what the Niners are thinking when it comes to Debo Samuel? And how should the Niners handle the Debo Samuel situation? Should they move him? Right. I, listen, I don't know a lot. I know everybody thinks I'm friends with Kyle Shanahan. Listen, Kyle Shanahan is the last person. Well, you are. That, or I'm well, you, the last person. You uh, are. You are friends what? with them, aren't you? 
I know I am. Not like I that. know. It's just, you know, we don't talk okay. about everything. We don't talk all the time, and especially with stuff like this. We don't get into this, right? Sure. I know what but you he know how feels the man about thinks. the guy. I do, yeah. exactly, and that's where I'll get to. I don't think anything yeah. goes down tonight for Debo Samuel. I don't think anything goes down this weekend for Debo Samuel. No, 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 no. I think, one, Shanahan is one of the best communicators slash relationships with the, co the players, coaches, and all of football. So I think Shanahan's going to go down fighting on this to keep Debo Samuel as long as he can. Do I know what went wrong? I have no idea. I've been led to believe it's a bunch of things. Not living in California, maybe Bosa's contract was talked about first. You know, I don't know. I don't know for sure. I've heard a few things, but nothing tangible. But I think between what I just said there, Shanahan truly loves the player. He believes in him. He drafted him in the second round. They got a steal there. He's just about to hit the prime of his career, all right? He's the best weapon on their offense. They put a ton of assets into Trey Lance, and it's a gamble, and everybody's still waiting to see how that goes. And the number one guy that can help Trey Lance look good next year is this guy on the screen right there, Debo Samuel. So I think the 49ers yeah. will exhaust all options in trying to keep him. And hey. if it does finally, okay, it's over. It'll be a trade around training camp or something like that. That's how I kind of envision it. Hey, Chris, when this, when this story first broke that he wanted to trade, I said, give Debo $200, give him a bike, give him the chain, <laughs> <laughs> give him whatever he needs in order to make this man happy. You do not move him. Un unlike the other ones, I mean, I, I, I mean, look, you hate to trade Devontae yeah. Adams. You hate to trade Tyreek Hill. I could see it. You don't trade Debo Samuel unless and, you have to. And I'll no, tell you, you this, don't trade uh, Debo Samuel. And like you're making all the points, I wanted to get there. You know, Tyreek Hill is close yeah. to 30. It's Devontae Adams getting up there. And those teams got to bear all the fruits of their great talents already. San Francisco's going, wait, we didn't even get to, you know, we didn't get to taste this yet. We, we just were just started. getting used to this. Yeah. And and yeah. the last thing to your point, I think it takes more to get Debo Samuel than it does Devontae Adams or Tyree Kill. He's just about to hit the prime of his career. You're gonna have to trade more to get him than than the, the Dolphins or the Raiders did to get those two yeah. receivers. So many moving parts. But I, no, I was just gonna say this. If though, if the 49ers trade him to the Jets. Your guy and my guy, because we were on the same page last year. As a matter of fact, I see somebody out there in the crowd with his jersey on right now, rocking a number two Zach Wilson jersey. If Zach Wilson could get Debo Samuel, Zach Wilson be a, will be an all-pro next year. He'll be a pro bowler because all he's got to do is just get the ball to Debo, and Debo will do the rest. I love this guy. He is my favorite wide receiver in football and so if they do trade them, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Jets, the Jets, I, 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 and I don't want to go so far as to say the Jets will be in the playoffs, but they'll <laughs> yeah, be a lot more. Down. They'll Slow be a, no, but, I'm, but seriously, they'll be a lot more entertaining. <laughs> sure. And be very competitive. I don't know how many games they won last year. Not that many because they're picking fourth. But they'll double their win total if they get Debo. No doubt. When they went four. He, look, look. <laughs> he, he, he let, yeah. he's one of the league no, leaders eight. in it'll average yards per reception. And he With Jimmy Garoppolo. and we know they're an offense that doesn't throw the ball down the field. That just tells you how talented he is. So how many how many yeah. short routes does he make chicken salad out of chicken you know what of? That's where he is special. But I don't I think yeah. it is too late in the game right now. The money, the contract, the trades, the draft right here. I don't think anything gets done. I think the 49ers yeah. will try to keep him because I think they think and like you think, Holly, and like I think. He's the best receiver in football. The Jets, I'm hoping they get Sauce Gardner at four and Jamison Williams at 10. That's what I would hope for Zach Wilson, and they, they'd be happy. Hey, Chris, uh, appreciate you censoring yourself, but I think you know we say shit on this show. <laughs> so you can say chicken salad. <laughs> no, he chicken. does. Right, so he says it. Good. But he thank says you it for, all the time. Thank you for being professional. Michael Smith. And we appreciate your Michael insight. Michael Smith is on a spree. Like, you know, it's like the Cowboys won three in four years. <laughs> Michael Smith is on a cussing spree. I mean, you know. He's like, it's like a Super Bowl hey, cussing hey, hey, spree. I like right it. Man. Love you, brother. That's my kind of Lo guy. Love you, brother. Keep up that good, keep up <laughs> the good shit, Michael, Michael Smith. Keep there it up. There you go. <laughs>
<laughs> Chris Sims. You're about to get a phone call. We'll what, get a phone call right we'll after talk, this. We'll talk to you later, man. Thank you. All right, Chris. See you good guys. Stuff, Be man. good. Have fun. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.